Hello and welcome to the Open Source Home Channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Pello Workstation. Uh, the Pello Workstation is actually what you see here. It's based around an IKEA Pello chair that's been slightly modified to accommodate a monitor stand and a keyboard tray. So the purpose of this design was to come up with a comfortable, low-cost, small footprint workstation. I got the idea for this design during the COVID pandemic when a lot of people were transitioning to a work from home uh, situation where if you don't have a lot of office space or if you want a secondary computing station this could be a you know a good solution without having to shell out a thousand bucks for a new desk and chair uh, but what ended up happening is this quickly transitioned into being my primary workstation even though I do have a nice desk and chair downstairs already it's really comfortable to work from it can integrate really well into most spaces um, as you can see in the picture here, I, I've set this one up near a big window um, where maybe a, a desk and chair might not be an easy thing to place in that nook. This chair fits in really nicely, so it's created a really nice uh, working environment, workspace environment. And I find when I go to this workstation, uh, whether it be to get things done for my job or to play games or something, I don't feel as far removed from the household or from uh, my family as I would if I were to go downstairs into my, my basement office that's kind of more closed in. But anyway, let's get into the build of this. The build is actually super simple. There's a couple different ways to do it, some of which don't even require any tools at all. Um, it's really only two parts. It's a monitor stand and a keyboard tray. Now, there's some other things that can be done in terms of cable management and things like that to make it your own, but the basis of this build is, like I said, the two simple parts, the monitor mount and the keyboard tray. So. So let's get into the build. Obviously this begins by sourcing the Pello chair and uh, the optional ottoman. So we do that at you know everyone's favorite furniture store, Ikea. And what you're looking for at Ikea.com is the Pello. So you see here, Ikea offers uh, two very similar chairs. Uh, one is the Pello, like we've been talking about. The other is the Poang. Now the Poang, in my opinion, is a better chair, hands down. However, the Poang is really less suitable for this application. And the reason for that is, is the keyboard tray gets suspended across the arms of the uh, workstation. And the Poang kind of angles up from the bottom and does not give you a whole lot of clearance for your knees or, or whatnot to clear that keyboard tray. So the Pello really excels here. It's It's got a more simplified design. It might not be quite as high quality of a chair, but the design of the Pello really um, complements uh, what we're trying to do here. So unfortunately, the Pello chair only comes in one color. Um, towards the end of the video and in the comment section, I will uh, show you how you can get colored covers for the Pello, but from Ikea, it's a one color deal. Um, it is what it is. So optionally, you can also match this with an ottoman. I personally would advise it. Kicking up your feet uh, is always a little more comfortable than just sitting, but that's gonna be down to everyone's preference. So I'm gonna search for the Poang Ottoman. And you can match your pillow with a Poang Ottoman. So I think the one that I have chosen for myself is this one here with the gray. It doesn't exactly match the pillow very well. Uh, per se, but there's some other options here that might if you if you're looking to stick with the stock pillow cover Then um, there's some options here that you know come a little closer, but uh, My my plan is to eventually end up with a gray pillow cover. So I went with the gray ottoman Okay, so the next step is to order these items from Ikea pick them up and then go ahead and build them so that we can uh, Perform the modifications. So let's go into an Ikea build montage, and I'll see you in 10 seconds. Okay, so now that the IKEA chair is actually built, we can move on to constructing the two parts uh, that actually make up this design. The first part is the monitor mount. So this is basically a rectangular piece of wood that has a notch cut out of it. Now you can see here in the drawing, the side profile, you can see there is a 7 8 by 2 and 3 8 notch cut out of a regular kind of rectangular piece of board wood. This this cutout corresponds with the exact dimensions of the handrails on the pillow chair. So what happens is we cut out this notch 
and we then glue this surface to the handrail of the pillow chair, to the armrest of the pillow chair, so that it creates a flush surface which we can then put the monitor stand on. The other part that we're going to be making is the keyboard tray. Now here's an assembly drawing of the keyboard tray. This is actually two parts that make up the keyboard tray itself. We have a piece of plywood uh, that makes up the tray body and we also have the tray grip. Now, now the keyboard tray grip has the same geometry as the monitor stand, uh, just shrunken down a little. We, we still have the 7 8 by 2 and 3 8 cut out. Uh, we just lose a little bit on the length and width because the tray grip doesn't need to be quite as large and robust. But in essence, it's the exact same cutout. So when we make the monitor mount, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this part a little bit long so that after we take this cutout from it, we can then trim off a second piece and use it for the keyboard tray grip. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with a rectangular board and I'm going to notch out this geometry that's described here. There's another way we can go about doing this that doesn't require any tooling at all. If you notice here, we have a 7 8 cutout and a 7 8 surface beneath it. If we were to simply get two pieces of 7 8 plywood and glue them together, one being 5 and 5 8 by 6 inches, the other being 8 inches by 6 inches, and glue them together along this axis, we could create this same part using two pieces of plywood that we get cut for us at Home Depot. So if you don't have a table saw to notch out a piece of board like I'm going to, feel free to use the alternate method that I just described with pre-cut plywood, and it'll be just as strong for this application. There's, there's nothing wrong with going the plywood route. So let's hop into another video, and I will go over my method for building the uh, extra long monitor mount. So starting off with a squared piece of lumber, I am just going to mark down all the dimensions for the cuts that I'll be making on this piece of wood. It helps to have the lines on the wood uh, so you can see along the way if uh, that your cuts are, are coming in as expected. So I'm also using the base of the monitor stand that I'll be uh, using with this build. Just kind of setting it on there as I draw the lines to make sure that things proportionally look good and um, that the cuts I'm making do make sense and are going to be fine with the monitor stand that I've picked out. As you know already, I've marked out the notch that I'm going to be cutting out of there, and here I'll just do some scribbling on it to uh, better illustrate uh, the, the portions that, I'm, that are going to be removed. So here I'm setting the height of the first cut, which is going to be my 2 and 3 eighths cut. If you've got a smaller saw, you might want to do this in two passes. I'm going to go ahead and set this to the full 2 and 3 eighths on the first go, but if you've got a smaller saw, maybe uh, do it in two cuts or three cuts. So here I'll bring in the fence and I'll use a ruler to ensure that even including the blade, the cut is only two and seven eighths wide. And we should be ready to make our first cut. During this cut, be sure to be placing pressure against the fence. The most important part of this cut is gonna be the squareness to the blade. And now we're going to set up for our next cut. We'll lower the blade so that it is max height uh, 7 8 tall. And we'll set the fence so that inclusive of the blade width, the cut is 2 and 3 eighths wide. And then we'll be ready to make our second cut, which will finish the notch. Okay, and now over at the chop saw, I will cut the monitor mount to its finished length. Um, as you can see, we're leaving lots of leftover for the keyboard tray grip. So there's the finished monitor mount piece with the monitor stand base on it. Looks pretty good. Uh, this is kind of what we're looking for. And here's our off cut. So out of this, I'm going to mark the cuts for the keyboard tray grip and we'll take that over to the chop saw and cut it.
Over the chops, I will make our first cut off the length and then I'll rotate it 90 degrees and cut it to size. And there we have the finished keyboard tray grip. Now with this piece and the monitor mount, we're gonna to wanna to knock the edges off with some sandpaper, but otherwise they should be ready to go. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just mocking up where the monitor mount is going to go. I'm uh, kind of pushing it as far forward as I can without hitting that radius so that um, we have good contact between the monitor mount and the armrest of the chair. So I'll mark that out and flip the chair over and then between the two marks that I have just made, I'm going to strip the finish off uh, with a power sander. And this helps uh, make a better glue joint between the monitor mount and the uh, armrest. You can do this with a piece of sandpaper or like you don't necessarily need a power sander. You can just kind of rough it up with a piece of sandpaper or steel wool. I also just kind of finish the edges of the monitor mount and give it a nice slathering of glue. Now you'll notice I only put glue on the bottom pad here, and uh, this is actually something that I revised later on, but uh, we will get to that. It's kind of a big moment. Um, so uh, for now, I'm, I'm attaching this uh, with glue and clamps. Um, I'm going to give it some time to dry, make sure it's you know, well adhered before I work too much with it. So flipping the chair over here, I'm going to add a couple more clamps just to make sure I have some good uh, adhesion here. You can never have too many clamps on a glue up, honestly. So here we are with the final kind of assembly of the monitor mount in place. You can see that the top is nice and flush with the armrest. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so here comes my mess up. While unclamping this after the glue is dry, I was kind of flexing it a bit and I heard some cracking that I wanted to investigate. So to just to make sure the glue up was, was good, I put a little bit of force against it, uh, probably too much because I snapped the entire piece of wood off. Um, the glue joint is good because the glue joint stayed there, but the, uh, the piece itself is cracked off. So a bit of a learning opportunity. Um, this time I glued the entire face, including the side of the armrest. So it should be a really nice, strong joint. So the next part we need to make is the keyboard tray, or as the drawings call it, the keyboard mouse surface. This is literally just a piece of plywood. It can be half inch all the way to one inch thick, depending on what you want. I used three quarter thick plywood and it's 13 inches by 32 inches long. So what we'll do is we'll cut this out and then we'll attach the keyboard tray grip as shown in this assembly drawing. According to the drawing, uh, you can attach the grip with glue, screws, or both. What I would recommend is attach it with screws first, uh, just so you can do a dry fit and make any adjustments if necessary. But then after you're happy with the fit, uh, back off the screws and glue and screw it down. So we'll hop into another video and get this made and ready for dry fit. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. I think everyone knows how to cut a 13 by 32 piece of plywood to that size and if you don't then someone at Home Depot I'm sure will be more than happy to assist you with that uh, if, you, if that's not something you can do. Here's a couple optional steps. Uh, this isn't mandatory but I, I'm using a router to round over the edge of the keyboard tray. It gives you a bit more of a pleasant feeling on, on the arms. Um, you can also use, use sandpaper to break the edge if you don't have access to a router which is completely fine. I also give it a really good sanding. Now this can also be done by hand. You don't necessarily need a power sander, but um, I find that since this is something that you are gonna have contact with, with your hands and stuff, it's nice to have a really smooth surface. I also give it a coat of polyurethane. Now this is a matte polyurethane that will dry and match the color of the chair uh, fairly well. The brand I'm using is Armor Coat, if anyone uh, cares about that. Okay, so here we are ready for the first uh, kind of test fit of the keyboard tray without the grip on it. Um, I like to set the keyboard tray where it's going to be well in use. 
and then kind of position the grip and draw some lines of where it's going to end up. So with the lines drawn and squared up on the keyboard tray, I'll position the grip uh, where it's going to live. Uh, just have a quick look at it, make sure it looks okay. Now it's time to start drilling some holes for the screws uh, in the grip. Now, because I'm using shorter screws, I have just applied some tape to my countersink bit just to make sure that I don't go too deep. Since we're using glue as well, you don't really need four holes, but I, I figure there's no harm in, uh, in over-engineering this a little bit. I'll use a small bit here to just finish off the hole so that the screw threads can pass through without biting into the uh, grip just to give it maximum hold on the uh, keyboard tray. So in this case I'm just going to attach two screws uh, just to do a dry fit of the keyboard tray to make sure it works exactly as expected. And you can see here it is a really nice firm fit and that's exactly what we're looking for. So now we'll back the grip off and give it a nice coat of glue and permanently secure it back down. If your grip doesn't uh, fit perfectly right away, if it's too tight, you can always sand uh, some off of its um, horizontal pad. Or if it's too loose, you can always glue felt to the horizontal pad to increase the friction. Okay, so here we are at one of the final operations that we need to do before we can begin assembly. I'm gonna start by placing the monitor stand on the monitor mount, approximately where it's going to end up being. And then I'm gonna use a small drill bit to mark the location of where the through bolt is going to end up. So this will allow me to transfer that location and, and drill it out without having the monitor mount in place. So here we are drilling, just lining up the mark I just made. This location may vary depending if you get the same monitor stand that I did. I will link that in the video description, but if you get a different monitor stand, then uh, it might have a slightly different location uh, for drilling through. And here you can see me using the monitor stand and the bolt in place just to do a test fit to make sure everything still lines up nicely and it looks like it does. Okay, so now I've moved the chair indoors and it's time for final assembly. You can see here we're placing the monitor stand back onto the monitor mount. This specific monitor stand has an integrated USB 3 uh, plug in it, so I'll quickly just install that before securing the monitor stand to the mount. So when securing the monitor stand to the mount, um, the kit should come with a very large flange washer and a wing nut that will allow you to secure the washer down. So if you have a clamping style monitor stand, uh, that will work as well. Um, I prefer the look of the through bolt one, so that's what I used here. But just make sure that you get that on there extra tight. This isn't something that you want moving around after it's got all the weight of a monitor on it. So just some footage here of me assembling the monitor stand. Uh, just consult your user manual for your monitor stand on the proper installation instructions. One thing I can recommend is make sure that the setup is really tight, um, a little tighter than you think it should be. Uh, when you get in and out of the chair, there's a little bit of spring action and the chair does move around a bit and kind of angle the monitor stand sometimes. So just make sure you have everything nice and snug so that that monitor doesn't move when you're getting in and out. So you can see here the monitor is now being mounted and once this is complete we can move into cable management. So your monitor stand should come with some type of cable management options. Uh, they usually just run the cables down pockets in the arms and that's what I'm going to do here. At this point it might be nice to tie wrap those cables together just so they stay in a bundle. You can see here I'm actually securing it to the leg of the chair. Now I'm using black um, Velcro because that's what I had on hand. I did notice after the fact that white masking tape does blend into the chair rail color a little better. So just use what uh, what you think looks best. So getting to the keyboard and mouse surface now. Um, the dimensions of the keyboard and mouse tray weren't chosen completely arbitrarily. These are common dimensions for uh, desk pads 
and I find that a nice uh, full width desk pad is a really good complement to this setup so you're not just using it on bare wood. Of course that's going to be down to whatever your preference is, there's no right or wrong here. Depending on the length of your keyboard and mouse cables, they'll need to be routed in whichever way makes sense. I have noticed that dangling the keyboard and mouse cable over to the right side of the chair is optimal and that way you can hook the keyboard and mouse tray onto the right arm when you're getting in and out and you won't have to worry about tripping over cables. One thing I definitely recommend is attaching a USB hub somewhere in the bottom of the chair so that all your cables from your peripherals can be uh, plugged into the hub uh, without having to have uh, long USB extensions for each one. Then you can just worry about a long USB extension for the hub itself. Unfortunately, I only had red electrical tape on hand, but uh, obviously black might blend in a little better for bundling those cables together. And here it is. This is as far as I'm going to go in this video in terms of customizing this setup. You can see here it's quite easy to get in and out of uh, once you're sitting down. The ergonomics are actually great. It's really surprising that this works out as well as it does. When getting out of the chair, you have a couple options for what you want to do with the keyboard and mouse tray. You can either sit it directly on the ottoman or you can actually hook it right onto the right hand side armrest, which I think is probably the, the best method to avoid uh, tripping over wires. So that concludes the build video. Uh, next steps from here would be to hook this up to a computer. There's a lot of different approaches to this. You could use a Raspberry Pi or Intel NUC and integrate it into the chair itself, or you could run long cables and run a gaming PC remotely, or even tuck a gaming PC underneath the chair itself. I'll have some upcoming videos on the approach that I took to hook my gaming PC up remotely via some really long HDMI and USB cables. It turned out really nice. So if that's up your alley, uh, stay tuned to the channel. If you like this content, please give a like and subscribe. If you hated it, give me a down vote. No hard feelings. I hope to see you back soon. Thanks for watching.